Okay, it is hot in here. It is incredibly hot in here. Now, if you hear a humming sound in the background that just, you know, sounds like a bee, it's not really a bee or else I wouldn't be here in this house right now. Um, if you hear that kind of sound, pay no mind, it's the AC. Oh my God, it's so freaking hot. This is the only thing about having hair that's really long that I don't like is it's very, very warm. It's very, it feels like a, wait, can I put my hair in a scarf? Can I put my, wait, can, can I put my hair? Yes, I can put my hair in a scarf. <laughs> That'd be kind of, kind of, kind of cool. Yeah, wait, oh, almost, almost. Yes, okay, Vogue. Hire me. What's going on, you guys? It's your Huggable Hipster here, and welcome to today's second video where it's going to be a Q and aim. <laughs> you like what I did there? Q and aim. No, it's probably just a Q and A. I don't want to get demonetized by YouTube. You know, perpetually hot days like this just remind me of Taekwondo summer camp when I would just go get Gatorade. We would have, you know, really good food that's not good for me anymore. There was like almost 3,600 of you guys now, which is absolutely freaking bonkers. All right, so the first question comes from Extronix. Extral. Oh boy. X. Trilonix. Extralonix. I think, I, I'm not sure. I think. Oh god, it makes sense up here. That's all that matters. Is your life everything you wanted it to be? As far as right now in this very present moment, because all that matters is the present? Yes, it is. Very much so. Thank you for the question. Joel Villario, I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, asks question to consider. Uh, are you a movie fan? Are you a vegan? What toppings do you prefer on your pizza? Well, Am I a movie fan? Yes, but only specific movies. And I'm a fan of the movie as long as the writing is good. For example, if it's a horror movie, yes, I am going to be so submersed in horror. Like, I just want to see if the horror writing is good. It doesn't matter really what kind of horror it is. I just, I, I want to be so, I'm just submersed in it. I just love horror movies so much. And am I a vegan? No, I am not a vegan. I actually used to be a vegetarian though for two years in college. And that, that was just, that was, that was not a good experience uh, because my system cannot, it has to process meat. It has to have meat in my system. I got very sick during the time I was a vegetarian and I tried to incorporate vegetarian things and vegan things into my diet, but I am a meat eater. So what toppings do you prefer on your pizza? <laughs> Some of my friends are going to give me absolute shit for this and some they, they already do. Whenever I mention any of these toppings, they already do. Uh, you know who you are if you're watching this. Um, broccoli, <laughs> mushroom, and if I'm getting a separate pie, it's going to be pineapple. Yes, pineapple belongs on pizza. I don't care what any of the chefs say. It tastes good to me and that's all that matters. And I also dip my chicken tendies in Coke, so... I, I like very strange things. Okay, I have a very weird palette. The next question is from Peter McPeteface from the YouTube community page. I have an important question. Look at your PlayStation controller. Do you call it an X button or a cross button? We need a definite answer, hipster. So I call it the X button. I don't know where it came from to call it the cross button, but I always have called it the X button. I, I never realized that it was ever called a cross button at all. So yes, I call it the X button. <laughs> Next question comes from a hey, Rebecca Chan. Thank you so much for putting in a question. So Rebecca Chan actually asked two questions. I don't know where the other one is in this folder. Kind of like put it all together. <laughs> I didn't properly sort it. That's my bad. Um, but yeah, no, she asked two questions. And the first one is, what do you like to do outside of YouTube? There are a lot of things I like to do outside of YouTube. She continued to say, I feel like those of us on YouTube only ever talk about YouTube and whatever niche we're in. I don't even know what else people like to do. So I like to do music production. I'm actually currently in the process of making my first properly recorded EP with a studio and a few of my friends. So I'm really excited about that. Not only that, but I love going outside for nature walks and hikes and going to the beach at the nighttime and having bonfires. I love doing that kind of stuff. I love reading. I am a bookworm to no end. I absolutely just love reading so much. I also love journaling. I love being meditative. Um, I'm not a religious person at all, but I go into meditative deep, deep bouts of thought whenever I get the chance. I feel like it's good to be reflective and meditate and just be inward thinking a lot of the time and just always being grateful for whatever it is that you have. No matter if it's something incredibly small like my glasses or something as big as potentially making partner. 
so yeah that is the uh that, that is what i do mainly outside of youtube i also like to go on drives like going on drives for me is just something so calming i'll put on some lo-fi music or some grunge and i'll just jam out to whatever it is and just go for a drive the other question from rebecca chan is what sparked your interest in youtube markiplier and casey neistat sparked my interest in youtube i i listened to them a lot <laughs> whenever it came down to it i listened to their advice that they would give on YouTube. I, I listened to a lot of what Markiplier and Casey Neistat, um, basically they weren't preaching, but they were giving advice without giving advice, if that makes sense. I've always been a gamer. I've always been someone who's been interested in gaming ever since I played my first video game at 10 years old. Um, I've always been interested in like the whys behind a video game. How are they made? What's, you know, what what is it what, what what is a video game like what what makes it like all this kind of stuff when i was really young and then when i got older i realized that this needed to be a part of my life on a consistent basis so that's when i started doing more collecting that's when i started getting more into doing youtube when i was in college because i thought this needs to be my job like this needs to be something that i do on a daily basis and what like initially sparked me to do youtube at first was markiplier and then i watched more of casey neistat stuff and he then really like markiplier was the reason behind why i started youtube but then casey neistat was the one that that basically created the the hustle within me if that makes sense i'm trying to i try to search for like the right word to describe it but it was basically like I watched a lot of his videos and I thought, well, if I work hard enough and I do what I need to do in life and pay my dues, I can get there too. The next question is from Gamerman361. Thank you so much for uh, putting in a question. And he said, how would you manage YouTube if you were the CEO? Pizza for everyone. Actually, you know, in, in all seriousness, if I were to manage YouTube, um... If I were the CEO, how would I manage YouTube? Um, everyone isn't going to be happy, right? You can't make everyone happy. You can't make everyone satiated and, you know, in a, in a way grateful for the services that people do as CEOs because being CEOs at large companies is a very thankless job a lot of the time. Um, so whenever I look at it, I, I don't know. I would just listen to the people. I would listen to... The consumers i would listen to the youtubers and i would just try to do the best by them you know try to do things by the company that are a consistent empathetic reflection of what the values are and i feel like as long as you listen to your creators and as long as you put them first then you're golden i probably wouldn't make any changes because if you make really big changes then that will be a detriment to the company instead of helping it but yes i would also add free pizza for everyone who works there postal three underscore d asks reboot or live remake would you want in theaters mine is gundam i don't know if you saw e on pacific rim i have not um Let's see, re re reboot. <laughs> uh, reboot or live remake. Instantly, the first thing that comes to mind is Blood Rain. I, I mean, I know that there is technically already a movie for that, and I loved the movie, but I would love to see a TV show based on the game. That would be absolutely incredible. Either that, or um, I know Cyberpunk has already been made. That was incredible. Um, I'd like to see a TV show or movie for Fallout 3. That would be so much fun. That would be a lot of fun to watch. Next question comes from Nick Knack. If you could make a game, what would the story and gameplay be like? Well, technically, I have my own gaming company, and I'm currently in the process of making a game called The Pieces of I, which we I don't have a release date on yet. We're still working on the art, and we're working on more of the story right now. Being more of a finality and more of a concept of where we're going to go with things. But yeah, I'm actually in the process of creating a game, so stay tuned for that. Next question comes from Andy7. Who is your favorite YouTuber of all time and who slash what inspired you to make videos? So I answered this question already previously, Casey Neistat and Markiplier. Um, but if I'm to pick a favorite YouTuber, I'm going to have to go with Casey Neistat because just on pure work ethic and how he puts his family first, that's an aspiration of mine, you know, to be able to you know, have my family be secure, have everything that I need in life taken care of because I made it happen. And that's what he did for himself. So I'd have to say Casey Neistat. Next question comes from Marvel Knight. Why are you so pretty? Games. I'm such a schmuck. <laughs> Gaming makes me attractive. <laughs> 
Uh, you know, this, in all seriousness, thank you for the sweet question. That's really nice. Next question comes from Nam Dyer. What are some things you love most in video games? For example, games that allow at least one playable character to have the power of flight. Um, I love consistent storylines in video games. That's what I love the most, actually. I love a consistent storyline that writers put in when the story goes all over the place and everything like that it just makes me aggravated um or irritated i should say not aggravated um but yeah a consistent storyline and peter also asks on twitter what is your craziest slash weirdest thing you've done for contents <laughs> and I, I'll, it's it's better if i show you god of war ragnarok is here next question what is your favorite genre i'm guessing genre of music or genre of movie or genre of game so if it's not if it's a genre of movie horror if it's a genre of game psychological horror if it's a genre of music alternative Next question comes from Ish Gabor. When are you visiting Orlando, Florida? Probably not in the foreseeable future because I can't stand the heat. Next question comes from Chrono Gamer. What's going on, dude? Thank you so much for submitting a question. Hard shell or soft shell? <laughs> This has been an ongoing joke in my friend group on Twitter of, of where it's hard shell versus soft shell tacos. I love soft shell tacos, but I'm also an e e evil, <laughs> evil rights advocate. <laughs> Wait, what? I love soft shell tacos, but I am also an equal rights advocate for the hard shell taco as well. And this is from the community tab, and this comes from Wu403. It's a two-parter, and the first part of the question is, what has been favorite, uh, your favorite gameplay Excuse me, for 2023 so far? And it has to be the gameplay for Final Fantasy 16. I absolutely love it so far. It's so much fun and so well done. And the next part, what has been your favorite game to play offline, i.e. not for content? Definitely Cozy Grove by far. Next question comes from Paul's Gaming Live, and it's actually a really interesting question where he asks, what is your perspective on the notion that gaming can be harmful to children? So it's really interesting. Depends on the title for sure on one end, because there are definitely some games that take it way too far, like Martha is Dead. I would like if I ever had kids, I would never want them playing that at a young age until they were older and understand the notion behind such strong themes in a game like that. But that's my perspective. That's just what I feel comfortable with. And every potential parent, every, you know, parent who has kids is going to be different. Well, I think, yeah, in the fact that games are not harmful in and of themselves, they do have themes that I don't think are child appropriate. But this is also why we have age ratings on games. Parents should know not to get their, you know, their five-year-old Call of Duty. <laughs> you know, like, you know, they're, they're, they're age ratings for a reason. Kimberly Harding asked, what's the worst food you've ever eaten? It could be at a regular restaurant, a meal at the in-laws, or a recipe you tried out. I love to eat, so <laughs> any food that I get, I know I am already going to like. I'm very also experimental with my food. Um, but I think hands down, the worst thing I've ever ingested would have to be, gosh, there were these spinach puff things that I made as an experiment when I was, I think in my early teens, it did not go out so well at all whatsoever. I did not know how to cook when I was in my early teens. So they turned into these dry, overcooked puff things that just tasted like cardboard. It was absolutely disgusting. Next question comes from Nightwind X7. Thank you so much for putting in a question. Who game? What game? Where game? When game? Why game? How game? I expect them all answered or face the judgment of the gaming ethics and disciplinary board in front of Darth Vader and Mickey Mouse on Mount Doom. That, that sounds like a, a joke. That actually, that sounds like a dad joke waiting to happen. <laughs> For real though, what's your process when you write a review? So I've talked about this in separate occasions, but to narrow it down into like a simplest form, I think I might do like a revamping of the video at some point. Um, when I review a game, let's say, for example, Final Fantasy 16, because that's the one I'm currently reviewing right now, um, I'll take the game and I will keep the game footage. Since I'm doing a playthrough of this on YouTube, I'll keep the game footage. I won't keep my audio or my face cam at all, I'll, you know, toss those once the video is edited and out on YouTube. But I have a special folder specifically for each game that I review for its specific footage for the game. I keep them all in their proper folders and each game that I review, I'll like edit in all of the footage. So that way, after I have the article done, the article is basically like my script for the video in a sense. Even though I do a little bit of ad-libbing of what my thoughts are, the, 
you know, the article is the script. And while I'm even playing the game, I'll be taking notes on themes and on motifs and on different, um, different things that I find imperative to put in the review. That's probably why you guys see that some of my reviews can be kind of choppy is because I'll take long durations to write down notes or to write down things that I really feel imperative to put into the said review. And then I'll write up the article, use that as a script. And then once all of the video is put together, I edit it in such a way where I have both clips and my thoughts, my face, everything like that put in for your guys' viewing enjoyment and for your understanding of the game. That way you guys can, you know, see if you want to buy it or see if it's something you're even interested in. So yeah, I can do more of an in-depth video on that. I know I, th I think I did one a while ago, but it needs an update for sure. This one is from the community page on YouTube and DDJ. I'm just going to abbreviate that if you don't mind. Uh, which videos are you most proud of and which ones do you regret the most? This is a great question. Um, so the ones I regret, I, okay, so there are ones I regret the most, but I feel like I could have done more with is my skit that I did on Freddy Fazbear. If you guys don't know what I'm talking about, good. Uh, it's still there. You guys can still watch it, but it's a skit that I did um, where basically Freddy Fazbear was hunting me down in my house. And this was when uh, back when I lived in New Jersey. So it was so much fun to be able to film that. I I had like the worst haircut in the world. <laughs> like everything was just fresh out of college. Going into this YouTube experience, this was my first year on YouTube. So keep in mind, I believe was it my first year on YouTube. I don't think it was 2017 yet when I had filmed that. Not sure. I'll have to check. But if you guys want, look on my channel and look up something Freddy Fazbear. I forget what it was titled. Um, but yeah, I, I did a skit with Freddy Fazbear and that one could have been done a lot better. The video I'm most proud of is my review on Detroit Become Human. And that's when I realized that I wanted to put game footage in my reviews. And that's when the reviews really changed up a lot because I feel like, okay, I am mainly a review channel. Even though I do playthroughs, I do Soulsborne Academy videos, I do all kinds of variety type stuff. I mainly review games. I am a game journalist. So whenever I take into account that, you know, the one, what my main priority here is on YouTube, it makes it a lot easier for me to throw myself, all of myself into my reviews. And of course I throw myself into my videos, but my best work I feel is with my reviews and my articles and the videos that come out of those articles. That's some of my best work. That's whenever I'm really and truly in my zone because like I'm, I, you know, not to my own horn, but I am a writer. That is my joy. That is my passion. And whenever I got to edit and put together, you guys don't realize how long it took me to edit Detroit Become Human's review. Like that review, I really hope some of the voice actors and people who worked on that game see that review at some point because that is my pride and joy. That is probably, that is my favorite review that I've ever done besides Death Stranding. And even Death Stranding, I'm thinking of doing an updated video for that review because I I now know and I now want to be able to incorporate footage. I didn't, I don't think I incorporated footage at all in that review. And now I really want to because I know where I can take things. I know how hard, much, how much harder I can work on these reviews to make them even better. So the next question comes from GoGetter11 and they ask, did you play games during childhood? If so, what ones were your favorite consoles and one or two games? So I've been playing games since I was like nine or 10 at the youngest. And I remember playing Pac-Man with my dad when I was very young. But like the first legit game that I played on my own was Resident Evil Remake 1 that came out in 2002, but I played it in 2003. So I think I was 11 at the time. Um, gosh, I, you know, it's so interesting because that's when gaming started its big boom whenever it came to technology. So a lot of the millennial kids will remember whenever things just went from not to 100 in just a matter of years at that point. Um, but yeah, no, I've loved playing Resident Evil 1 Remake. I loved playing Zelda and the Wind Waker. I loved playing, oh God, Scooby-Doo 100 Frights thousand frights, a hundred frights. I'm not sure what, how many frights it was. Um, that was one of my favorites to play. Sometimes other kids would come over and, you know, they would be like, oh, what games do you like to play? And my mom would always remind me not to show them Blood Ray and boobies and zombies were not a great combination. So other kids would come over and I would show them Resident Evil and I would show them <laughs> Scooby-Doo Night of a Thousand or a hundred frights, and my mom would actually get their parents complain to them and be like, My child is now terrified, and I'm over here like, <laughs> My work is done. But in my childhood, it was mainly the GameCube, and I would just play 
Zelda and Resident Evil and Scooby-Doo. Those were like, those were my mains. Those were the ones that I played the most of. And last question of the Q&A comes from James Michael Perry. Thank you so much for commenting, dude. I really appreciate it. He asked, why is Spider-Man your favorite superhero? And did you play games with your parents or family? And if so, which ones? Uh, to address the first question, why is Spider-Man my favorite superhero? I thought that go like when I was a kid, my logic at the time was that going from building to building to building looked so freeing. It looked so exciting and Spider-Man could just leap from every single building and it just looked so incredible and freeing and you could fly like a bird and it was absolutely, it looked just so beautiful. And I read some of the comics after I saw the movie back in 2002 and I thought, oh, this is really cool. I like, I, I want to just get to know this character more and more. And then as I got older, I got interested in Venom. And then as I got older, I got interested in uh, Morbius, you know, and, th and that's why I, I was so excited when uh, Jared Leto played Morbius, because whenever I got into that character, when I was a kid, I was like, oh my God, like he's absolutely perfect for this role. And I know just by popular belief, I know a lot of people don't like that movie, but I love Morbius. Okay, let's go. It's Morbin time, hands down. But yeah, Spider-Man will be forever one of my favorite heroes because just of the freeing nature that he has of where you can just web things from building to building and in a sense just fly. I just... I love that. I love it so much. And did I play any games with my parents or family? If so, which ones? So I mainly played games with my dad when I was growing up because um, my mom just, she, she she's not a gamer. She's not into games. Um, but my dad, he is, you know, he's a tech junkie like I am. So whenever we would play games together, it would be mainly Resident Evil. Th and we would play games together. It would mainly be Resident Evil remake of the first game. And that was my very first game actually was Resident Evil 1 remake. So yeah, that was the first game I ever played. And that was the only well god i think besides zelda and the wind waker that was the game i played the most with my dad but you guys that is it for the q and a that is it for the questions and answers the q and a's if you will uh, i hope you guys enjoyed this video and if you guys want to see more q and a videos just let me know down in the comments below i think i might actually do like a dedicated uh, a dedicated topic video like soulsborne type stuff next q and a video because i would love to be able to answer a lot of questions on the soulsborne ideal but you guys, that's it for me. If y'all like my face and what I do, please be sure to subscribe and hit that bell down below. I make videos every day here on YouTube. May you find your worth in the waking world, your hunter. Stay casually nerdy, and I'll see you all in the next video. Umbasa.